Hi, I'm Philip, and in this video I will introduce you to customer identification in Bloomreach Engagement. For that, we will cover basic concepts for hard and soft IDs, their relation with data ingestion, the merging process, as well as have a look at some scenarios with conflicting IDs. Moving myself out of the way, granting you a better view, right off the bat, without explaining anything else, I want to emphasize that having more than one hard ID is generally considered bad practice and most likely will lead to issues down the road. Although there are use cases where having multiple hard IDs could make sense, that is something up for discussion during the beginning of your journey with Bloomreach. That said, the multiple hard IDs you will see throughout this video are meant to simplify the general understanding and should not be viewed as best practices. Now, when we are talking about IDs, we usually address them with ID type, which is basically the ID name, independent from whether it's a hard or soft ID, and the ID value. A customer profile can only exist in Bloomreach with at least one hard or soft ID. Hard IDs are usually referred to as unique identifiers. In a best practice scenario, this ID should be able to identify a single customer in all systems across your entire connected IT landscape. Consequently, one hard ID can only hold one value and is of the string data type. Once it's set, it cannot be modified or deleted. Good examples here would be an email or a customer ID given by another system. Soft IDs, on the other hand, can hold multiple values, hence they are lists of strings. A good example is the cookie ID. Therefore, think of a user having multiple devices which all would have different cookies assigned to them. They can be moved from one profile to another, as we will see later. The last important factor is that soft IDs are subordinate to hard IDs. Profiles are initially merged based on their hard IDs and only if no conflicts arise at this level, the soft IDs come into play and may trigger a merge between profiles. We will see most of this in action shortly. Before that, we have to consider another crucial principle. Within a single project, it's impossible for multiple profiles to simultaneously share identical ID types and values. Chris and Sarah's profile on the left could not exist separately in one project since their ID value for hard ID 1 is the same, whereas the ones on the right have the same ID value but in different ID types. On the left, instead of creating a new profile, Sarah would be immediately merged into Chris's profile, or vice versa, depending on who was there first. Therefore, we need to elucidate the role of data ingestion first. On display are various methods through which data can be fed into our platform. While the technical specifics aren't the focus here, what's essential is understanding that regardless of the path that data takes to reach Bloomreach, its handling remains the same. Let's consider the purchase event displayed on the screen. Whether it's tracked via our JavaScript SDK, imported through a CSV file from an SFTP server, or received through an HTTP request to our API, the processing is identical, and it will trigger specific functions like profile merging. This principle applies not only to incoming events, but also to updates of customer attributes as both require at least one ID to be valid. For abstracting the technicalities, we are using simple code to display the data which will arrive in the system. This data usually encompasses single or multiple hard and or soft IDs paired with a representative event. Moving forward, we'll represent events as circles tied to a specific customer profile. Consider Chris's profile as an example. It showcases a single purchase event in his historical activity. Now to the more pressing question. When do merges occur? To address this, we'll trace the path of a standard customer journey characterized by a couple simple activities. On the timeline presented, four key events capture our interest. This journey commences with a first-time visitor to your website, at which point the customer's profile is anonymous. This customer is currently visiting your website from his or her phone, to which our SDK assigned a certain cookie ID value, 123 in this case. While browsing, they generate a couple events, such as page visits or item view events, symbolized by the dots. Their subsequent step involves logging in. By doing so, the anonymous customer supplies an ID, in this case ABC, which assists in identifying him as Chris. As technically it remains the same profile, the prior events are still available. Chris then continues browsing your website, leading to a purchase. This action, in turn, generates a series of new events in his profile. Later in the day, Chris decides to review his order. So he revisits your website, but this time from his computer. 
since there is no connection between his prior visit from his phone and this new visit from his computer, the SDK assigns a new, unique cookie value to this visit, 456. This causes Bloomreach to initially perceive it as an entirely new customer. Consequently, the profile created during this visit is not associated with Chris's pre-existing profile. Before Chris proceeds to check on his order, his attention is diverted by some items displayed on your page. This action creates new events that, for the time being, are stored in the newly created anonymous profile. However, Chris quickly recalls his original purpose for visiting your page and logs in. Similar to the previous instance, this login provides the necessary ID to recognize the visitor as Chris. At this stage, a merge happens behind the scenes. The second anonymous profile and Chris's profile are merged into one. Thus, Chris is assigned a second cookie ID and all events from the second anonymous profile are transferred to his initial profile. Now Chris can proceed looking up his order, which again would create some more events. Let's have a look at what happened there behind the scenes. Here we see the case from the slide before. In addition to that, you can see examples of incoming data from different data sources, which all would cause the merge to happen. Don't forget that the source of the data is irrelevant, so whether it's tracked through the JSSDK, imported via CSV file, or comes to Bloomreach as an API call, all will lead to a merge event. First, for a merge to happen, we need two profiles, otherwise there is nothing to merge. And second, we need some incoming data which combines those profiles. Here we have the hard ID 1 with value ABC from Chris profile and the cookie ID with value 456 from the second anonymous profile in all three examples. As for the JS SDK, the cookie is sent in automatically by default. So it's there, but it's just not written out as in the other ones. The data has now entered our data pipeline and triggers the merge of the two profiles. In a merge, one profile is always deleted from the system. In this case, it's the anonymous profile, since it had no hard ID and, as we remember, hard IDs are hierarchically superior to soft IDs. The soft ID cookie is added to the other cookie value and, of course, all events are transferred to Chris's profile. Now, Chris can browse your website on his computer or on his mobile phone without logging in and all events will land in this one profile as long as the cookies are in place. So far, we have not covered what happens to customer attributes during a merge, but this is a quick one. Let's grab our previous example and say that Chris's profile has the first name attribute with the value Chris. Hypothetically, your website allows users to provide their first name without identifying them first, for instance with a registration form or a login. So in the anonymous profile, the user entered Max as first name and he did that today, whereas Chris signed up and provided his name yesterday already. Upon merging those profiles, the most recently updated attributes will override the older ones. Since Max is the most recent value from today, it will override Chris upon merge, since the value Chris is from yesterday. Aside from that, the merge is the same as before. Let's have a look at some special cases now. The most common one will be the case of stealing soft IDs. As mentioned in the beginning, soft IDs can travel from one profile to another, whereas hard IDs are set in stone. To exemplify this, we have Mike's profile here. He has the hard ID 1 with value DEF and the cookie ID with value 456. Now there is data coming into the platform, a purchase event in this case. Paying attention to the cookie ID, we can spot that this is the same cookie as in Mike's profile but the value of hard ID 1 is ABC, thus different from Mike's. For the sake of simplicity, let's get Chris back, because that's his ID. Here we have a clash of hard IDs, of which you have been warned on the previous slides. Merging these profiles is hereby impossible. What happens is that the cookie ID that was on Mike's profile originally travels over to Chris's profile. Consequently, also the purchase event is assigned to Chris. Another common merge happens if we only have soft IDs and no hard IDs. Here we have two anonymous profiles with different sets of values for cookie and soft ID 1 each. In our incoming data, we now have the cookie 123, which is part of the rabbit's profile, and the soft ID 1 with value 456, which is part of the owl's profile. There is nothing more to object the merge of these two profiles. Thus, a merge happens. The only hierarchical order among IDs is between hard and soft IDs, but not among IDs of those groups. The profile with the most recent updates will be the one that is kept in the system, receiving all IDs and events from the older profile. And the purchase event has only one place left to go. Last but not least, 
let's have a look at what happens when you have conflicting hard IDs of the same type. Here we have Chris and Mike again. The incoming data has the value ABC for the hard ID 1, which is in Chris's profile, and the value DEF for hard ID 2, which, on the other hand, is in Mike's profile. Merging these two profiles would be quite easy if not for the GHI value for hard ID 2 in Chris's profile. With those IDs conflicting, a merge is not possible and this event will not be recognized as a valid event in our system, thus it will be lost. There are a couple more interesting cases to analyze and take apart, but we hope that this gave you a jumpstart on the discussion around IDs.